Uh, good afternoon. Uh, welcome to the, our chapter seven, uh, quantum finance on the AI powerful tools in quantum finance. So as I mentioned in the last uh, micro lecture, uh, this lecture we focus on the uh, how we can make use of different kind of uh, AI technologies on the quantum finance. Okay, and also because uh, these chapters uh, correspond to the books is uh, quite intensive because uh, we will talk about different things. We will talk about the basic concept of AI, some very history, and uh, and also focus on uh, three major uh, AI uh, powerful tools. They included the uh, artificial neural networks or simply what we call the neural networks. And also we'll talk about uh, two other very important technologies on AI. One is on uh, first logic, and, uh, and the other one is on genetic algorithm, GA. In fact, uh, these three uh, technologies is uh, what we call the um, most basic uh, kind of uh, AI technologies. Okay, in fact, uh, in terms of uh, RGB uh, computation intelligence uh, society, these three are the three most important uh, cornerstone for uh, computational intelligence. Okay, so today, uh, uh, because of this uh, chapter is so intensive, I decided to break down into two uh, micro lecture. One is on today on the AI basic concept, and also on the artificial neural networks. And uh, next week we will talk about. Uh, the other two technologies, one on uh, first logic and also the other on genetic algorithm. So today we'll focus on the first part. Okay. So remember, uh, in our class seven weeks, okay, and uh, we talk about quite a lot about quantum finance, right? We talk about the basic uh, quantum field theory. And also the most important part is uh, how to make use of the quantum field theory to design and also to model our finance system. And uh, of course, the most important part is uh, how to make use of the uh, enharmonic oscillator model in order to uh, redesign the uh, most important equation, right? The Schrodinger equations on the uh, quantum finance modeling. And uh, in the last lecture, we make use of these uh, fundamental mathematical models to uh, do our programming, right? In order to design uh, easy to use and uh, implementable, okay, and computational uh, possible solution to calculate what we call the quantum price level. QPL, Nancy Java, right? And uh, uh, the most funny thing is, uh, as I always say, is uh, either in China, Hong Kong, or also in US, the concept on uh, quantum finance is rather quite acceptable by most uh, financial people. I think the most important part is two for first uh, is because quantum theory now they becomes uh, more easy to understand because of so many movie and so on on discovery trend no talk about that it's based on the uh, quantum entanglement okay in Chinese what we call the uh, land uh, that sort of thing okay so people began to accept the existence of the quantum world so in terms of finance uh, the most important part as I always say is uh, finance always have the feeling that uh, it exists in two kinds of uh, uh, world. One is as a kind of uh, the price, as you can see from the market price, going from one to another level. And the second most important interpretation is what we call the financial pattern, as uh, what we have uh, mentioned and what we have discussed for the technical analysis, different kind of pattern. So in terms of finance, that kind of quantum field theory or quantum finance is already rather acceptable, just only in the sense that uh, uh, in the past we don't have a uh, kind of uh, uh, functional, okay, or computational possible uh, computational model 
to model or, or also to give us uh, some concrete what we call the uh, quantum level for us to do the investment so by doing that uh, we already have some kind of uh, what we call the quantum price level for the investor and also for the trader to do the trading as I always say in many investment talk in the old days not far ago before we have what we call the quantum finance forecast uh, in terms of the trader what they need is the trend and also the price level and then they can do the trading as uh, what we have mentioned in the last lecture the seven kind of uh, trading technique either using a simple trading or reverse trading or hatching okay all they need is some price level to do so because in the old day they don't have forecast but what i'm going to tell you now in the following couple of weeks okay is in fact we can do something more by using ai because as i always say ai have different level of uh, what we call data mining and the highest level of course is not only to extract patterns but to forecast future as i mentioned in many of my books and also in my papers for the past 20 years okay make use of ai to do forecasting is not it's not a new kind of technologies but of course to forecast by name is rather new just uh, as far as i know only 10 as more below 20 years of history because it's difficult and complex and also before that we don't have what we call so uh, easy to use a uh, program trading system as what we are now using what we are you you using the MT system so you, you can imagine in the old days even though we have a very powerful forecasting tools we don't have the real time data for us to programming or forecasting less alone with the what we call the real time forecast so now that we are lucky we both have the data platform trading language and also algorithm workable algorithm to do financial forecast so in the following couple of weeks we will talk about different kind of method okay of uh, using ai technologies and how to make use of these technologies to do forecast and of course uh, how to do financial forecast in fact uh, from year to year so say especially starting from last year when i start teaching in uic and um, every year there are some uh, high quality uh, five quality students uh, under my supervision to do the uh, five project on kind finance okay and of course because of the level of difficulties and also complexities all the times uh, it's possible to to produce some uh, good publications and of course system so uh, in fact now the AI is not a kind of uh, just theory or fantasy but uh, in some sense it's a kind of uh, technologies that we can use in daily basis but as I always say whether you can make use of it to earn money is another thing but uh, as I always say but we can do some real-time forecast of every financial market so already a very good start as compared with the past hundred years we have nothing right just the data patterns and all the time you have to do your own decision so there is some big change okay all thanks to what I'm saying is two uh, areas one is the AI technologies and the other is the computer technologies with the computers of course you 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 only have theory you can't do anything uh, especially for me in the past uh, 30 years uh, when I got a PhD in year 2000 at uh, that time only some mainframe system or some uh, supercomputer system can have the chance to do actual forecast or a theory but nowadays as I always say even a very common PC okay with uh, sufficient memory okay uh, so for example 60 gigabyte or up to 32 gigabyte is good enough for you to do any financial forecast within minutes but of course it depends on your algorithm you're using right so 
in the future two weeks or three weeks, okay, we will talk about different kind of uh, AI tools that uh, you can learn and you can use for your future study and also for the content finance. Okay, so let's start. So in the previous lecture, we talked about different kind of uh, business concept for content finance. And uh, in the last lecture, we implement all those technology, right? Together with the empty programming, you have already learned it in the lab, I, I think, to uh, program and also to extract and also to model all those uh, quantum price level, what we call language Java. Okay, and in the last lecture, I also tell you how to make use of this land Java, right? Quantum price level to do different kind of uh, trading and also hatching. But of course, one step further, okay, if we have so many data and financial price level, can we forecast the, the market? Forecast meaning what? As I always say, just like the weather forecast, okay? Weather forecast is forecast what? Forecast that tomorrow and also the future seven days to even 40 days, right? In the old times, when I'm working in the weather observatory, we are forecasting only three days only, without at least uh, 10 to 40 days. Only thanks to the uh, provision of uh, more powerful supercomputers, right? So computation technique can improve, of course, but also relied on uh, better algorithm. So uh, using the same concept, with where they can be forecast, one of finance, right? So, of course we can. So, um, in the coming few lecture, we will talk about different AI techniques first. All those uh, tools and components, so that you have some basic understanding. And you will know why AI can help us to do that kind of stuff. We can use it to do the data mining, we can use it to do pattern recognition, and of course, uh, to forecast anything you want. But of course, uh, it depends on your mode itself. So uh, in the coming chapters okay, and lectures, we talk about different AI method and technique. And also, I will also have a single lecture talk about two additional techniques, uh, my favorite. One is called Chaos Theory, and the other is called Fractals. These are two very important and interesting technologies and phenomenon, in fact that related to AI and also in nowadays uh, uh, intelligent technologies and especially useful in finance. So, okay, and later I will tell you that. Okay, so basically we will talk about some uh, key basic technologies related to AI and uh, financial engineering. Okay, and we will talk about it one by one, don't worry. So let's have some very basic understanding on AI. So as I always say, AI is uh, when you chat with uh, many websites and especially from Wikimedia, okay, you, you will know one thing. Formal AI is coined in 1945 by a group of five funders, okay, what we call the founder of AI, in a very important conference in the what we call the uh, Dartmoor Conference. Okay, so at that time they have a summer camp. Uh, the topics, the topics is artificial intelligence and applications. So remember, at that time in 1915 something, we still have don't have PC. Okay, is the birth, okay, of computer system. Okay, e e even earlier than that. So you can see, the birth of AI, in fact, is before the birth of computer science or the birth of a computer system. So which means it have, have a very long history, in fact. And also the five founders okay, of um, uh, artificial intelligence, in fact, they are all major guys on two areas. One is on artificial intelligence, of course, and the other is on computer system, as, as you can see from one is from IBM. So of course, you, you can imagine why we have AI. The main reason why is 
we want to have some intelligent computational technique. Well, before we design our PC, you, you can imagine that. People already think about this. As I always say, why Intel? In, Intel? Intel means intelligence. But of course, nowadays, Intel system is still not intelligent, right? <laughs> it's still just a simple CPU. It's fast, of course, but not intelligent. So later on, I will tell you what is the meaning of intelligent. Okay? So, uh, many people will say AI start with 1956 on this important conference or workshop. But as I always say, it's well before that. Because as you can see, check with the human history, start from the great uh, mythologies, okay, the Asian Greeks. Already we have the Bohemians who stolen far, okay, and give to the first human. And also build the first human based on the clay and also the airs, what we call. So you can imagine it's a kind of a humanoid in terms of a science fiction point of view, right? So if you see Greece, it's a kind of a science fiction. In fact, it's a kind of a human robot that it produces two things. First, the object itself, the humanoid from clay, right? The second, the fire, which means the intelligence. So in terms of machine, of course, as I always say, which is what we call the soul and also the body. Which means in terms of machine theory, it's the machine itself, which means the robot. And also the intelligence, which means the operating system, which means the hardware and also the software. In fact, when they combine together, it's what we call robot, right? So in fact, you can imagine what we talk about machine for so many years is start from 1950, we are talking about robotic system. But of course, as I always mention in many AI course, and also my new book on AI is, at that time, we are too greedy in the sense that we want to build total intelligent machine in 1950-something, especially in Japan. But of course, uh, it's not so successful, right? Mainly because of the technologies. It's not so high-tech at that period of time. But now there's totally difference. Now that we can do so. And of course, we're already doing so, right? In different cities, even in China, right? In China, in Japan, in Europe, and also in US. Different city or different center have already have their own uh, robotic system. So, in terms of human being, all the time we are thinking about this, you may ask the reason why. The reason is very simple. Because human claim a cell as intelligence. So, of course, when we want to build machine, we want to build a machine that is as intelligent as human. So that's why we have our uh, start from 90, 50 something, we have the Turing test. Turing test, of course, uh, is rendered by a very famous paper by Alan Turing, what we call the father of uh, computer science and also an AI. So he ran a very interesting uh, game, in fact, it's a game called Turing text. The Turing test is very simple, as you can see from this uh, beautiful diagram. Uh, we have uh, interrogators, which is an uh, examiner, and there's three rooms. They are all separate. Okay, so the inter the examiner is uh, uh, situated in the cent central room, and on one end is a human, and the other end is a machine or robot or program, no matter what, and they are connected with the examiner full uh, monitor and also keyboard. So the game is very simple. Within a certain period of time, now normally it's uh, 20 to 25 minutes, the examiner can ask these two guys anything, okay, by typing into the keyboard. So you can ask anything, okay, not just questions, you can just check it. Say, for example, uh, today weather is good, okay, and then you have to respond. So as always, if in terms of uh, uh, human intelligence, the most easy thing is some Q&A, especially for some logical Q&A. For so example, asking you two times two is what? The difficult part is something fuzzy, which means uh, why two times two is not equal to seven? <laughs> That's our thing. Fuzzy means for something that is not rational thinking or not logical thinking, and you have to use your own intelligence. 
Okay, so you can imagine any tuning thing about the tuning test is not a calculation kind of thing. It's just what we call NLP, right? Natural language processing. As I always say, human being, why we so focus on natural language processing or language? Because as I always say, language is the only thing we can judge whether a human is intelligent or not. Which means when you talk with a guy for a period of time, say 20 minutes, just like a tuning test. Of course, you have some idea about how intelligent or how non-intelligent or how clever or greedy or something else. Okay, you can do some judgment. So tuning test is a kind of um, testing. Okay, not only on the intelligent part of view, it's whether, whether it can handle rational or also non-rational things. So that part is what the machine can't do very well. So uh, what I'm saying is uh, starting from almost half a century, right? So now it's already 70 years to now. The tuning test is still a very interesting and competitive uh, games and examinations in order to test whether a machine is intelligent or not. So you can imagine that kind of test is uh, it's uh, always ongoing, well before we have computer system. You know, you all know computer system, especially for the PCs, just coming to the earth in the late 90s, 70s and 80s, something like this. Okay, at the same time we have the Apple and also the PC. But before that, we always have the, the, the big guy, okay, the mainframe or the uh, supercomputers before that. Okay, so you can imagine all the time when people build machine, we want to build some what we call intelligent machine. So it's a, as I always say, it's a kind of a, a human nature. Okay, so AI is not a new thing. As I always mentioned in many uh, talks, seminar and lecture. But of course, whether you can implement that kind of uh, intelligent system is an article kind of concern. So let's continue. So, definition of AI. So, although there is no definition of AI, as I always say, why? Because uh, AI is, is really AI. AI meaning that uh, there is no exact solution, uh, exact definition, all the times. And all people, uh, publishing book, including me, have our own definition. So, it's very logical, right? Because AI itself is AI. So, all the time is very flexible. There's no exact solution, even exact definition. But of course, uh, there, we have some concerns in some big things. So, for example, in terms of the uh, AI, uh, American Association of uh, Artificial Intelligence. In fact, it's not the, the most important one, but uh, one of the most uh, 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 one with long history. Okay. So it's the capacity of computer or program to operate in the way in order to minimize, that is a very important word, minimize, which means to, to pretend human thought process, such as uh, reasoning and learning. As I mentioned in many, many, many uh, seminar course, uh, learning and reasoning is two correlated stuff in human intelligence. We cannot separate one from the other, which means we cannot, don't have reasoning, and we have learning or learning without reasoning. All the time they are close together, together with the first thing, of course, knowledge. So we have the knowledge, reasoning, and learning. And you can say, by doing this, you, we, we, we generate some new knowledge. That, that's true. Okay, we will talk about this, okay, when we have time, in some uh, uh, high-level AI project. So uh, in terms of AI, they has uh, a definition, is uh, the scientific understanding of the mechanism under nine thought and intelligent behavior and their embodiment in the machine. So this definition is one step forward. It not only talk about the way of thinking and reasoning, but also talk about the relationship between the body and mind, which means we talk about how machine think, reasoning, and embedded in a kind of machine. So you may say we are talking about robot. Not much because computer system itself is a machine, right? Robotic is a kind of machine 
that even the body are uh, mini-mix human, right? With uh, the hand, the head, the body, and the foot, right? So a PC is still a machine. Robotic is just a human not machine, what we call humanoid, right? So another definition from a very famous book on the AI and, um, by Peter Norick and Russell is uh, the book is called I, I, An Approach, Modern Approach in, uh, in fact, the later version is the 2009 or something like, okay, because it, it went to the major book on AI. The definition is uh, coming to four categories. System that can think human, okay, so it's the first definition. The second, system can think rationally. And the third, system can act, not think, act, not human. And the last one, system can, they can act rationally. So you can see, uh, as I always say, uh, perfect AI machine, of course, is not only handling rational problem, but also have what we call irrational problem. So in my one of my book on the first new system in two three, uh, defined AI as uh, the simplification of human intelligent thought and and behavior for design and implementation of intelligent system software objects is what we call agents, and also robotic system. So as you can see, as a as a more complete definition of AI is uh, you can think about two parts. The first is the uh, the thought, the act, and the behavior. The act and behavior. And the second part is the this design invention, embodiment into what kind of machine. So it's a kind of extension of the Vesper and also on the AAI uh, definition. In fact, we are all talking about three kinds of systems, three kinds of uh, embodiment. First, is a kind of uh, intelligent system, right? It can be hardware and software or machine. It can be a software robot, what we call intelligent agent. Very important, very important kind of technologies. I will mention it in, in, in all the lectures. And the last one is robotic. So three kind. Either it's a system, okay, it can be hardware and software or come together. It can be a software robot or a physical robot, what we call humanoid. Okay, three kind of thing. So these are what happen, I tell you, in the nowadays actual world. So uh, it's not a, a fancy stuff. Of course uh, also happen within your mobile uh, computers and also your mobile phone because it can be software agent, right? So uh, another very important definition on AI is what we call the strong AI and weak AI. Okay, as you go through many websites and books. Uh, in fact, it's a kind of argument, as I always say. And uh, in so many years, start from 9 to 15 something up to now, there's still a debate have the definition of AI. So how we define AI. From Robert Risky, uh, inferential AI scholar mentioned work is the on the book planning and understanding a a computational approach to human reasoning state. Artificial intelligence is field of requiring for a net of consensus in fundamental vision. That, that's true. Which means all the time different professors of different AI centers have different definition on AI. And that definition the most interesting thing is that uh, all the time they are changing from time to time. But uh, there is one I uh, think is quite universal in some sense. It's what we call weak AI and strong AI. So uh, let me tell you. For weak AI, the definition is uh, for some AI scientists, including me, believe that AI should be focused more on the design and implementations on the system or program that can minimize human thinking and acting, which means it's a more focus on the thinking part, okay, on intelligent part, what we call, we call this weak AI. Weak means uh, it's only focus on the most important part of intelligence, which means your brain, right? So for, 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 for this time, including me, we focus most of the time on the brain, how we think, how we generate knowledge, how we do reasoning, and how we store our knowledge, or how we search for our knowledge. That's all thing. So it's always a very big stuff. But for other part of scientists, okay, 
they believe that AI systems should be an overall system that not only on the thinking part, but also must be at like human. Okay, so which means they are thinking about think and behave like human. They are talking about robot. So we, we talk about this is a strong AI. For some book talk about is a GAI, generalized AI. Okay, uh, for the book on AI approach, they talk about the GAI. Okay, but uh, as I always say, is uh, because it's so big the whole problem. So up to now, it's not so successful in some sense. But of course, we still have some robot. But they are all specified to some what we call a particular task. So if you compare with the general definition of the strong AI, still, still a very long way to go. So, so as I always say, it's a difficult thing because you have to, you can imagine you have to do one thing. You have to produce a robot that just act and behave like human. Not difficult, okay, after more than 70 years, from 1950, 60 now, right? It's still a challenge. Strong AI. The strong AI referred to the study and intelligence of machine that could be successfully performed under any international task. So any means any, any means just a human. You can ask him or her to do anything, okay? And ask him or her to answer your question. Okay, no, no need to be ex exact or correct, but can answer. So which means the basic concept of the tuning test, right? But not only on natural language processing, Right, but also an app and also behave. <laughs> so the key characteristic of strong AI, including the ability to reason, solve puzzle, make judgment, planning and learning and communicate. So it should also be conscious, objective point and self awareness. So what I'm saying is uh, impossible in some sense, as we refer to my book on first new system at the last chapters I talk about this because not a single task is easy. All the tasks are very difficult. Even the robotic vision, as I mentioned, is, is a very difficult kind of things. So there are many research on that, of course. Okay, so for example, the building of intelligent machine, robot in particular, and uh, there's some uh, puzzle solving problem. Of course, the most important part is, uh, as you can see from this, uh, picture, the deep blue versus, okay, the uh, chess master, okay, in the 1997, okay, so, so that part is, uh, so you may ask why on chess playing, because uh, we all believe chess playing is the most uh, intelligent, intensive activity human being can perform, uh, that's true. And also, it's not a logical thinking kind of thing. If you play chess, you will know. All the time you can win, okay, it's because of you are taking some what we call logical steps, what we call some intuitive thinking. So many people in Europe, especially in Germany, they are taught, uh, working on that in terms of research, how to handle or how to generate what we call instant. So it's a very, again, uh, important stuff. And of course, uh, the other one is uh, quite related to what we call uh, conscious science or new science. Talk about the conscious and also the objects, objective thinking and self awareness. Uh, that is difficult. But as I always say, if you want to really build a uh, AGI, a uh, true robotic system, you have to do that. Uh, as I always say, maybe we can do so in the future because we have one new thing, right? Start from last year, we have IBM have the first uh, quantum computers. That can perform very fast calculation. Or many, most important part, part is that it can produce what we call fuzzy calculation. Okay, later with time we'll talk about that. So we have some chance. But still, I think it, it takes at least 10 years to achieve that uh, almost impossible task. Okay, 100% uh, human load and human interactive robotic system. So you, you can see this, the target of strong AI is quite, is quite tough. So why not go for something 
what I'm to say, a bit more, not simple, but easy to retrieve. So we have uh, another app, the, what we call the big AI, or what we call the soft AI. Uh, so the main reason why is because of the emergency of the uh, computer technologies, especially for the uh, uh, PC and mobile technologies. So some scientists, including me, think about why not we just focus on some very specific thing on human being, which means the true core thing on human being, on intelligence, which means the way of thinking, the noise seeking. So by doing that, we, we only focus on just one human behavior, the thinking and problem solving skill. So we call this soft AI. Soft in the sense that uh, it only focuses on the algorithm, the architecture, which means the software. So you may see in the past uh, 30 years, because of the PC and mobile, we have a lot of uh, software system, right? So why don't we build some intelligent software system that can minimix human thinking behavior? In fact, we are all doing so. One example is on data mining, right? Big data. In fact, is until that is minimix human thinking behavior, human knowledge. So by doing that, we have uh, in the past thirty years, in fact, it's forty years, we have three important technologies related to this. The first is uh, ANN, artificial neural networks. Okay, and uh, the main ideas we we will talk about this today, tomorrow, is to minimix one important thing human brain, how humans solve problems by using what we call new networks or artificial new networks. The second is on what we call evolutionary computing according to the genetic algorithm. So how we can build model to minimize human genetic evolution, the evolution theory. So that kind of computer model is what we call the EC, evolution computing or evolution programming is a very important kind of technology in the past of years. And the last one is my favorite, is uh, what we call fuzzy logic, okay? Or fuzzy logic system, for what some people say. It's how to build some system or model that can minimize human, what we call imprecise or fuzzy determination of things. In fact, I can tell you that in the next lecture, most of the time we are talking about some fuzzy thing, not exact. And we all handling things in not exact case. Not all the things is one plus one equal to two, uh, as we all know, right? So, one may see the boundary between the hard and the soft AI become more and more overlapping. So, for example, when you try to have some intelligent system and you put it into some dummy robot, in fact, you are combining soft and hard robot. But of course, you are not talking about the AGI, right? We are not building a perfect robot that can replace human, I don't think we can do so because it's too costly, right? It's too costly. It's not possible, but it's too expensive, right? So modern AI now it becomes an integrated discipline, including quantitative science, neuroscience, biological artificial neural networks, information computing, robotics, data mining, deep learning, active vision, natural language processing, many things all related to AI. So as uh, many people saying is that AI now should be become a new school of learning. That's true. Because uh, I can tell you in Europe, especially in Germany and uh, also in Switzerland, and uh, there are some universities have AI college or AI faculties. Uh, they have the data mining, they have the AI, they have robotics, and also on new science. Well, I always say when you really want to build a AGI robotic system, you have to know a bit more on the neural network, the biological neural network, which means you're talking about the neuroscience, right? That's all thing. So uh, it's a very serious kind of thing, right? And take time to do so. Not a single thing is easy, but it's useful, of course. So uh, classification of neural networks. Uh, this chart I come with my previous book on the AI in 204. It's a very, very uh, 
generalize on the AI in different category, as you can see. Okay. And uh, main, all, in fact, all the kind of technology you can handle in AI can be found in this chart. So I, for this chart, I try to divide AI in two categories. One is on the approach of behavior. So a bit more on the, uh, what you see. And the other approach is the, what we call on quantitative approach, on what you think. So you can even say, one is on the appearance, one is on non-appearance part, the thinking part, you can't see. But in fact, it's, it's also important. Okay. In fact, there are two kinds of technologies. So in the behavior, behavior science technologies, we have, again, two, two branch. One is on the my VA, and also is on body. And also, on different of that, so if somebody take the my VA, we have the expert system, natural language processing, logical reasoning, and also the symbolic machine learning. And also for the body AI, of course, we have the robotic system as well. And different kind of robotic system, in fact. Okay, when you learn robotic, you know there are many kinds of robotic systems. So on the focus on the quality part, which means on the weak AI part, we have the forming branch, new network, first logic, evolutionary computing, and chaotic approach. So uh, in this course, we will talk New level first, first logic, generic algorithm in the next lecture, and then a uh, bit on chaotic approach, and also on factors in the next lecture. Okay, so in the coming three lecture, we will talk about the new networks, and then first logic and uh, GA, and also on a bit on uh, chaos theory. Okay, and then you will know why we have different kinds of systems. Okay, they are all related to AI, but using well, I'm saying two totally different perspective, okay, to solve this problem. And uh, later on, I will tell you why. Okay. So let's start with the first uh, part on the neural networks. So first, okay, a bit of uh, biological neuroscience. Uh, for all who have studied uh, biology in high school, I think you have learned a bit on only one thing. What is the uh, biological new structure of your brain? Right? So I think all you know is um have you if you learn in the high school, okay the brain, uh the structure inside the brain is totally different <coughs> from the other part of the body. Because the cell in the brain, they are all connected in a very special way like this. So every single brain cell, okay, each of them is a brain cell, have uh, different connections. Uh, we have a very long connection, what we call the exon, connected to another cell, and also they have the connector, what we call the synthesis. And uh, for every single cell, also we have some connection, what we call the dangers, to accept the external stimulus, which means every single cell just like a sensor, it will send the surrounding. Okay, the surrounding means uh, your sense. So, for example, the sense of your feeling, the sense of your smelling, the sense of your vision, and so on. Okay, so the sensor, and each cell is connected to another cell uh, into a kind of uh, three-dimensional networks, what we call neural networks. In fact, that that kind of structure is uh, already discovered long time ago in 1980 something, as you can see, okay? And uh, it's the first scientist to talk about the, what we call the brain science. But of course, at that time, we don't know how it works, okay? Not until 1933, okay? When the Spanish uh, new scientists try to propose uh, innovative ideas that uh, these networks, okay, they are connected together, okay, and uh, the reason behind is that they try to, try to do what, try to make use of the chemical reactions to send signal, which means it's a signal processing kind of thing. 
So it's a very new idea. So okay, all after the okay second world war. So this is what we have the what we call the neurons and also the new networks, and it composed of the nucleus, the central body, the axon, the connection between cell to cell, the dendrite to accept the uh, input stimulus, and also the steps. They are what we call the conjunction, okay, for the connection of two new cells. So in 1943, okay, almost all new scientists believe that the sole purpose of the new one is try to process energies, and how it works is still a mystery. Not until that day, okay, was Peace tried to publish a very important paper called Logical Calculus of Idea Image of New Activities, and tried to tell you a very important story is New networks itself is uh, information processing networks. Try to processing information by chemical reaction, or what we call uh, information firing. So you can imagine the new cell is uh, just like a sensor, and then when they have sufficient stimulus, okay, they have sufficient stimulus, they will try to send some signal to another. So you may ask how. In fact, it's a chemical signal for the exchange of two chemicals. One is the calcium ion and also is the sodium ion. Okay. And all the time I can tell you that for the brain functions, all the time is the exchange for these two ions, the sodium and also the uh, calcium ion. So that's why, as I always say, after serious uh, exercise or, or thinking, you have to drink some uh, uh, calcium ion, right? So uh, why we have to, to have that kind of uh, refreshment? Because of the brain function, right? So uh, after this uh, in inferential paper, people try to relate our human brain thinking as a kind of uh, network connections. And the most important concept is different from the computer concept, because as uh, you know, in the computer concept, all the information is stored in a hard disk, right? So you may imagine how can we store information into the brain? Because the brain is not hard disk. So this paper tells you a very funny story is human beings don't know why. The network itself, the structure itself, contains knowledge. Contains knowledge. So you if you you believe that, okay, so every problem can be solved because by what we call the changing network or training the networks, you can store more knowledge. So as I always say, in 1940 something, we already think about the kind of thing. But you may ask, why for the computer system, we're still using hard disk to store some information? You know what I'm saying? So, very interesting, right? The main reason why is that at that time, we still have that idea, but we don't know how to do that. But we believe the human brain is doing that all the time. Because you, you, you can imagine, human brain have a storage center to store all the information like a hard disk. It's, it's impossible, I'm telling you. And also, it's illogical. If you think the structure itself, okay, and we, we all believe, okay, every day during the, the night time, we are reconnecting our new networks. And by reconnecting the new networks, we can store more knowledge. That is what I'm saying is more logical in some sense. Because we are not a computer. We don't have a hard disk. And that hard disk uh, 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 proposition, no, no one believed it because no one will... will we have gas to to when they come in because it's, it's totally unacceptable. But if you say a new network that can be trained or we connect, but the connection is not the knowledge, that is logical. But of course, how to prove that? Right? So later I will tell you there is a very important guy that can do so. <laughs> so that's why we have our latest uh, research work on new network. And all, all people believe because nowadays, uh, we already do so. Okay, it's not a fancy kind of thing, but it's possible. Okay, and also it, it can be provable. Okay. Uh, new models. So as a direct analog to the biological new networks, so we have a very simple model, what we call this uh, new model, and some people say it's uh, what we call uh, perceptual. Okay, it's simple. So, 
simple error is very simple. It's something like this. You can represent a new cell as a kind of a logic gate, just like uh, electronic connections. Okay, and all those uh, dendrites, okay, are what we call input signal that can be connected to this uh, uh, perceptron. Okay, and for every single input, it has uh, what we call a weight. Of course, you can. Okay, a weight in order to to set some balance between different input. Okay, you have a weight, and then. This uh, cell is just like a logic gate. So it's trying to add up all this uh, stimulus together with the weight. Okay, so for example, you have 10 stimulus and 10 weights. So they combine together and they add up together. When it is up to a threshold, it will send a signal. So if you are an electronic guy, you know what I'm saying. It's a kind of a logic gate. Logic gate means uh, when you have sufficient input from different uh, stimulus. One is cross the threshold, it will fire. Because it's zero and one, right? Okay, that's how thing. So we call this a uh, simple model as a kind of perception. Okay, and all the new network, the basic new one is something like this. So it's very simple, it's just a new cell. It's just like a uh, logic gate. So you have different input. The input combined with the weight add up together. When they are cross the threshold, it will fire. So you may ask, what is the threshold function, right? So we have two types, basically. We, we, you, you can divide anything. In fact, a different paper will have different proposal. But of course, the most basic type is the symbol function, the S function, okay? We have two interpretations. Either is a binary one, which means zero or one, just like a simple logic game. Or a bipolar signal, which means negative one to one. They are the same, just like your imputation, okay? So you may ask how to learn new things. So uh, using this model, we input an other variable called the uh, weight and also the alpha term, the learning uh, parameters. So this alpha terms uh, will define uh, how fast you learn new things. Okay, you, you can imagine if um, you're more stubborn, your alpha term will be you will be more bigger, which meaning that uh, it's uh, difficult for you to find. <laughs> okay, but for some people, it may be more easy to learn things. But uh, you, you can find, think about one thing is uh, when it's very easy to learn new things, sometimes you will make mistake. So all the time you have to check with balance, right? So uh, how to tune the learning rate, of course, is a kind of uh, uh, experiment you have to do. Okay, but at least we are using that kind of thing to do the uh, what we call uh, machine learning using a uh, new model, okay. So of course we have different model to do so. And we, I will tell you more later on. So the alpha is the learning term. Uh, for some book, uh, it will also say uh, it's the learning rate, okay. And the gamma is the, uh, the uh, sigma, is what we call the learning momentum, okay. So it depends on the model, of course. So uh, how it can be used, of course. Only one new one, you can't do anything. Of course, we have many neurons, okay. And then you may ask how many neurons we have in the brain. We have 10 to the power uh, 20 neurons, left neurons, okay, so many. So uh, the most simple model for uh, uh, artificial neural networks is uh, what we call a uh, single layer neural network model. Single layer means a single hidden layer. So we have one input layer. So of all those uh, new networks. And then we have one hidden layer. The hidden layer is the, the, the inside layer. And then we have the output layer. Output layer connected to the outside world. So we have one input, one output, and also one middle layer. Okay. And also you may ask how to make connection. So all the time we will make full connection. Say for example, for every single neuron in the uh, input layers, it will connect to every single hidden ne neuron by a different weight. So how we work for the uh, new network is, is try to propose uh, what we call a learning algorithm for you to what? To rearrange or to update all the weights. By updating all the weights, okay, we can store new information or generate some new knowledge. As I mentioned, the first part for the new network is 
It's not using hard disk, but it's using the network structure to store information. So you wonder why I will give you some example later on. Okay, and we will do it from time to time. Okay. So typical artificial neural network is consists of one middle layer. It's what we call a uh, single layer neural network model. Okay. And the classical model is what we call the fit forward neural network model, which means all the information is from the input, middle, and the output. We call this the fit forward mode. And all the basic A and N, including the class, uh, classical, the cohort networks, and also the LVQ, okay, and many things. As I mentioned, if I have time, you go for the reference paper I tell you, and also, of course, the AI book. It will show you all different kinds of networks, okay, many more than 20 to 50, okay? And then many people believe that, and also study believe that, all AN have a very good learning capability and forecasting. So as I always say, first you have to store information, and then you learn the pattern. Once you learn the pattern, you can predict the future. Feed that process, I say again. First, you have to learn. So for example, for a stock system, you have to learn all the history pattern from the data, right, the time series. So first you have learn and storage. And then by learning, you learn the pattern. By using the pattern, you can forecast. So it's a feedback process. And it can be done from a new network. So that is why it's so important. So uh, commonly used in two important applications, of course, on in terms of prediction. One is on uh, financial prediction, as I always say. And uh, in fact, the first uh, tier of papers is on the weather forecasting. Be at the meaning, because it's uh, uh, at the beginning of uh, computational science, uh, if you talk about a long history of data, so all the well-known data, of course, is the weather data, because the weather data all the time is uh, uh, open data that can be used by any scientist. Okay, and at that time, uh, in 1970s and 80s, okay, you have to pay for financial deals. So why, that's why many people start with Tom series economy on the weather data uh, at the beginning, right? But as I mentioned, nowadays uh, the financial data are all free, so it's totally different. So uh, in terms of classification of uh, neural networks, okay, we have uh, two approach to classify. The first approach is uh, based on the learning method. So we have uh, three different learning methods. Okay. The first one is uh, supervised learning. Supervised learning is uh, you have some input sample and the target output. And then you will give all this input and output to train the networks. And that kind of learning is uh, supervised learning because you have supervising with some target output. The second kind of learning method is uh, you don't have the input and target output, but you have the pattern. What the machine have to do, what the neural network have to do is to do some kind of uh, data mining. Uh, so we can say, for example, generate some rules, generate some patterns, or do the custom. So all this kind of thing is uh, you based on no input and target, but you have the data. So in fact, uh, you may ask, is that very often? In fact, it's very often. Say for example, um, say for example, uh, a robotic system. When you try to take a look on a, a picture or a scene, so you can imagine for a robotic system, no one tell you what happened, right? But the machine itself can guess some object from the picture and then do some identification. So that kind of thing is unsupervised learning, right? Without any important target, but it can do some, some pattern recognition or learning. So we call this the unsupervised learning. Okay, there are many methods. Oh, I won't go through it in details. And uh, the third one is a very funny thing, but very important in fact. In fact, we are doing that from time to time. It's what we call reinforcement learning. Reinforcement learning is uh, uh, just like you train a dog. Okay, so how you train a dog is uh, you try to uh, ask the dog to do something. If they do something correct, you will give the dog some food. If not, you don't give. <laughs> okay. So we call this reinforcement learning. So in fact, reinforcement learning all the time we are now using this in the human world. In fact, it's uh, very, very effective. So uh, we have three kinds of learning. 
And also in terms of neural we have different model and different model have different characteristics to do that kind of learning. Okay. And all those uh, can be found in the reference I give you. So uh, depends on your interest. So for example, if you're interested in say, reinforcement learning, okay, you can take a look on some papers on this uh, reinforcement model, especially for the, what we call the antiquity model. Very interesting model, okay. So uh, it depends because there are so many networks you, you can you can you can merge. So that's why uh, people all the people talk about new networks. So you may ask uh, some people may ask what is uh, deep networks? In fact, it is the kind of new networks, <laughs> but uh, in the sense that it have uh, many what we call hidden layers. So uh, uh, I think in the lecture twelve or thirteen. If I have time, I will talk about uh, an example from my papers on the deep networks, so that you have some uh, basic idea on that. Okay. So the second one is the classification of the uh, area of applications. So in fact, for AI and also neural network, we have many class of applications, but uh, for me, I classify it into five different classes. Maybe there are some more, I don't know, because as I always say, AI is uh, never have a real definition, right? Every single writer will have their own definition. For me, I find. And the first classification, the second prediction, the fifth one, pattern recognition, the fourth one, uh, associate memory, how to store memory, and the last one, automation. In fact, it, it covers all, all, all the things I, 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 I think, okay? Because it, including the uh, storage of knowledge, the extraction of knowledge, the recognition of patterns, and also the forecasting of something you never see. Or you just want to make it more better, automizations. So almost I think it, it, um, it contains all those possible applications, but, but there may be some new one I, I never felt. Okay. But that's obviously good enough. So uh, in this course, because I have so many networks, but uh, in order to complete the story, I will tell you three. Most important thing, I think. Okay. Uh, the first thing is uh, auto-associative networks. Very funny. Uh, this kind of network, okay, in fact, is the first tier of the uh, uh, artificial neural networks people in, uh, can design. And uh, very important. This network is trying to solve one problem. How to associate with something with another one. So example is... Uh, 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 everything you're doing this, I can do. So, for example, uh, when I ask you what is uh, uh, new networks, so maybe you can associate with some picture or associate with some idea. So, association, in fact, is uh, some kind of connection with one thing to another. Simple association is uh, what is the meaning of uh, AI. In fact, it's a kind of association, right? You connect AI to it with some meaning. So associative network is doing uh, only one thing. Try to connect one thing to another one. So we have two kinds of association. The first one is what we call the auto-associative network. Is the input is the one you associate. So you may ask, what, what, is, what is the usage? The usage is important. <laughs> so for example, you try to ask a student something. So you try to ask you something. So when I ask you something, I try to ask you to check whether you remember that or not. In fact, it's a kind of association. But that kind of association is funny, right? It's uh, when I put, say for example, uh, the basic time when, uh, when I uh, teaching new networks as a separate classes, it's an assignment. So for example, you have to design a new network, that kind of networks, okay? Try to store five letter A to E. Okay, so once you learn this, when I give you A, you will return A. When I give you B, you will return B. So you may ask how useful it is. Uh, the tricky thing is, if I give you a matter very similar to A, but not exactly A, maybe distorted, <laughs> can you recognize A? That's all way. So we call this auto-associated network. It's to do only one thing, is to associate with your memory, which means is to check and also to store knowledge. So very important, why we can store new things. And the second uh, uh, associative level is even more funny. It's what we call the head associative level, which means I input A, you will generate some knowledge. So for example, A mean apple. 
B min a bad, C min a cat. So the hetero associated member is more powerful in the sense that it associates A into something totally different B, but all the time with B. So you may ask how important, of course it's very important because all the things you learn in every lecture, you are doing that kind of hetero associated memory, which means I tell you something, you label it into some concept. So we have two different kinds of storage methods, of course. So you may ask why are we doing so, of course. If you want to build a robot or a system, try to store knowledge, you have to do so. So the first kind of uh, new networks uh, for knowledge storage and re ex extractions this is what we call auto-associative networks. Okay? So the network itself is not difficult, it's uh, by the connection between the input and output layer and some connection. But of course, uh, uh, different models have different algorithms to do the what we call the uh, network learning. One important one, this one, okay. So uh, in this model, okay, very simple. The whole model is, uh, uh, you can see a full connection between the input and output layer, okay. And all the connection are full connection to the uh, output node, okay. Mo no middle layer, because it's associated with them. So the algorithm is uh, something like this. In fact, uh, I extracted from a book in the 1994. In fact, it's a very good book on uh, new networks. In fact, at the time, I'm still I'm using this book. So for the enlargement, I'm using the definition of the, the algorithm. The algorithm itself is simple, I, I can say. So it comes up with two parts. First part is the network weight in the station. All the time is using random number generation between zero and one, okay? Uh, you may ask why 0 and 1, because uh, using 0 and 1 and also a simple function, it will be the most reliable and easy to train. Okay, So the training step is something like this, step 2, 1, 2, and 3. So you add up together and do some iteration, and then the next. The most important thing is uh, how to update the networks. So using this simple uh, new one update method. This one is very simple. Okay, And uh, that network, although it's very simple, it can store information. You can store information, and also you can use to extract information as well. Although it's very simple. Okay. Of course, uh, nowadays uh, methods are more complex in some sense, but all begin with some simple uh, algorithm first. Okay. So the second whole field networks. That one is important because uh, whole field networks, of course, are invented by John Hofield. and the most important part is uh, whole field generate the night generate. Uh, this model and also published papers in 1984 and at the same year it got the Nobel Prize on that. And the most important thing is that it works. It works. Works on what? Is to solve many important problems like the child for assessment problem. Okay. Uh, if you chat with the Wikimedia you know what I'm saying. And uh, most important thing is uh, it can we can perform a very good associative networks to store memory up to now. So this is the structure for the uh, whole field networks. Okay, different from the uh, associative networks, uh, it is what we call our recurrent networks. Recurrent network meaning that uh, the network will generate generation to generation, which means the input from the first generation generate output. The output will be generated into the input for the second generation. So that's why. Although it seems to be very simple, but it's very powerful in storing things. That's why it got the programmers. So it used to store information. So again, many people still using this. So if you want to see the algorithm, you can check with it. Okay, I won't go with you. So if you want to check, you just uh, check with the reference. It tells you all the basic uh, things. But the algorithm itself, I can tell you that, again, it's only two-step process. But the funny thing is the this activation step. Okay, all the things is very natural, right? But it's very powerful. If you have time and if you want to know more, you can check with this. Okay, the memory reset already have the implementation, you can check with it. It's uh, really quite powerful to associate memory or store memory, what you say. Okay. So hopefully mm -hmm. network is important, you provide a very workable model for new network to understanding the human memory. So it's an important component of AI. In fact, uh, for uh, my new book on AI, I talked about 
the history of AI, the most important part is uh, after 1984, uh, it come to the second golden age of uh, AI because of uh, hopefully now. Because uh, before that, because uh, there are many not so successful case or many new networks, so the uh, many funding cut. But after that, after that, uh, 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 there's new hope for uh, new network. So come to the second, second golden age of new network. So so that's why the whole thing is so important. Not only the thing is in work, but uh, it provides some new hope. Okay, for scientists to do the uh, ongoing research on new networks. Uh, the third one is uh, the one that I already mentioned because uh, although it's, it's simple, but it's the most basic one on deep networks, right? So this network is also similar to the feed forward network, right? But one thing difference, this network can do the back propagation, which means the information flow is from the input hidden network to output, right? But for the rate updating, it will make use of the output and compare with the target output because it supervises the learning. Okay, calculate the difference, and then by using the difference to do what we call the gradient descent to update all the weights backward, which means the information for forward for training, and the calculation of the error will be go backwards, which means once you calculate the difference, it will update the weights between the hidden layer and the output layer, and then. For each hidden neuron, it will compute and also update the weight between the hidden layer and also the input layer. So we call this the feedforward back propagation model, FFBPN. In fact, it's the first step on, on any deep networks. Many developers different in the sense that you have many, many, so many hidden layers. Uh, in, the, in the final, naturally, I, I will give you one example in our time. Okay? But my latest paper is, uh, is a very classical deep networks. And I will tell you how to make use of it to do financial forecast. Okay. So again, I have attached the algorithm. So the algorithm is a bit what was I say is a bit uh, 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 compact, but it's not difficult. If you spend some time, I think you understand because at uh, the time I'm a student, I also do that. And my professor again just give me this this page. Okay, for me to understand the algorithm itself is not difficult, but of course. The implementation, okay, you have to spend some time. But again, in internet, there are many uh, uh, implementation. But I, but for me as a as a student, I think uh, you you better to do it by yourself so that you really fully understand how it works. Okay. So you may ask, how can we make use of this to do forecast? Very simple. So some you using uh, Dow Jones right as input for the past uh, two thousand day, and then fit into the input. And then the next day result, which means the open high low codes, right? And then use as the output. So by using the network, you can learn the pattern from the the previous uh, uh, time series. And then you can use the unseen data to test it. So all the time we have we will uh, separate the the data into a uh, few part, the training. Part. Uh, most of the time is about uh, uh, 70 percent and then another 50 percent is on the testing part which means you are using for 70 percent of the time series data to train the networks okay within uh, an error range after that you are using 50 percent unseen data to test the network see whether it's better or not if not you can you can continue the training and then to be safe you can use another 50 percent what we call validation or evaluation step to make sure okay it's okay but at least i think you have to use uh, two patch the training and also the testing case to test on network okay so not difficult and then once you have the unseen data for for example from today you will focus tomorrow uh open higher close so it's the most straightforward way okay so if you have time just uh, go for it and you will uh, know more a bit more uh, of course in uh, the coming lecture, after we go through different AI uh, tools, I will have some true example to show you. Okay, in fact, it's the one we are now doing every day. Okay, so where to go? So in fact, uh, after this lecture, you know two things first, right? What is AI? 
why we use AI, and uh, what kind of uh, 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 AI method we're using. And of course, uh, we have some very uh, overview of uh, new networks. What is the new networks? What is the biological new networks? And different major uh, basic new network we are using. Okay, so in the next lecture, we talk about two other uh, important technologies. One is fuzzy logic, and also the other one is uh, genetic algorithm. Okay, so uh, let's take a break, and then uh, we continue our lecture uh, next week. Thank you.